Well, guys, I want to welcome you here on a Wednesday night. I have a very special guest that I'm going to bring, bring up here in a few minutes. But first, I want to talk to you. And first, I want to tell you this. I love you. I know it's not an easy day to live in, but you didn't sign up for easy. You signed up for better. Amen. And the Lord is not offering us easy anymore. As a matter of fact, with some of the events that's taken place in the geopolitics of the world, in the media, on all the media mountains, in all the political and the, and the, the school levels, and then, of course, even the heavens are being shaken right now. I'm going to be speaking tomorrow night on a network, and one of the things that I'm saying is I'm talking about the great eclipse that happened, the April 8th event that is seen in the heavens here, that, that is, anytime that God is speaking in the heavens, that's the voice of God in the heavens, and the voice of God in the book of Joel is seen as the shaking of the heavens. When God's voice is in the heavens or when God's voice is in the earth, the earth is shaken and the heavens are shaken. Now we tend to think of a shaking as something that's really bad, you know? And, um, and it's not, it's the voice of the Lord. And it can be bad because it's both great and terrible. And depending upon whom we are loyal to, it's either great or it's terrible. Amen. And I tell you what, I got great news for those that love the Lord. Amen. And I've got terrible news for those that don't, and it's the same word. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. So last week, guys, I started a kind of a sermon series that I really didn't intend on doing so because I'm talking about artificial intelligence. I'm like, why would you do that? Because it's so much in the headlines today, and this is part two of this, artificial intelligence versus authentic wisdom. Divine wisdom is not our artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence is going to give you the wisdom of all the people that entered, in, that entered knowledge into it. And those are not your friends. Amen. Like, well, if, if, if Google has an AI, I mean, it's not going to give me the wrong information unless, of course, Google censors information that is good. And it's like, well, Google would never censor any kind of kingdom agenda. I mean, if you ask Siri, hey, Siri, who is uh, Muhammad? It'll tell you who Muhammad had. Muhammad lived 400 years, yada, 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 this, 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 yada, yada, yada. Say, hey, Siri, who is Buddha? And, you tell, and then if you say, Siri, who is Jesus? It'll say, I don't know. Wow. Like, oh, they would never censor anything like that. Like, oh, wow. How about them apples? But let me tell you what they don't censor. They don't censor pornography. So within the mind frame of that AI, it registers pornography as good because so many people call it good. You guys tracking with me? So you have in the natural masses, you have program thinking, which is we know now is called a hive mind. Meaning, you know, man, there was a, there was, even in Texas, there are certain cultural ways of thinking that is not the kingdom at all. And you're like, don't be talking bad about Texas, Pastor Troy. Yeah, especially around this March 6th date, right? Somebody please tell me you know that March 6th is a big deal. That's the Alamo Day. Amen. I don't even know if you qualify to have your foot on this soil if you don't know that. But just exactly like that, just exactly like that, when I say that, that comes from a big part of the Texas culture of, man, you stick it to people and you let them know what you think and you tell them how the cow ate the cabbage and we all celebrate that. Sometimes that's good, but most times it's not. There's no need for you to comment on somebody's spandex in Walmart. Just walk past it. But I'm probably going to comment on it. Right? It's like, okay, or there's all these, because I think it's funny. And, and part of that is just a cultural thinking of things that we value, right? So every single culture is defined by what you value. And then every single mind struct is also defined by what you value. So if you have a biblical world lens, and if you're looking at the world through a biblical world lens, you see things and you see something completely different than someone who has a media world lens. Now, they have been taught how to think, whether they know that or not, as was determined by the values of whatever media source they plugged into. 
Amen. Like, well, no, it tells me everything. No, it does not tell you anything. There's really no such thing as the news anymore. There is somebody's opinion of the news. I mean, you can't turn on any, it doesn't matter if you're a CNN person or if you are a Fox News person. What's real is those people are telling you what to think. They're giving you, and you value their opinion because you think their values line up with you and their values don't line up with you. Oh, see, some of you are like, don't be talking about my Fox News now. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I don't trust any of those folk as far as I can throw them. You should know them by their fruits. Amen. Now that I've, now that I've said all that, I mean, we're talking about the value for the biblical responsibility of what we think and how we think. If we're going to have that value, we're going to say certain people are allowed to tell me how they think. Certain people are not allowed to tell me how they think. And some people, I care what they think. Some people, I don't care. But this is how God tells me to think because as a man thinketh, so is he. So just this last week, there was a lot of media about there was a city council person in another state that was, they were arguing if they should open up these sex shops and they literally sell um, a childlike toy. Without going off into the details of that, it is the size of a child and it is designed for pedophilia. Now she didn't call those people pedophiles, she called them minor attracted persons and she suggested that this was actually good for society because it keeps them from actually preying upon children. Now, there was a huge and there was a monster outlash that came against her and so she pointed out, listen, I merely spoke my opinion but I voted against it. Please check my record because I actually voted against it. So here's what they're doing, they're saying, Okay, this is what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna tell you how I think, but don't believe what I tell you if, if I do this other thing. That's a hive mind, where they're doing something directly in front of you, and then they're saying, don't believe what you see, but rather believe this. And listen, they're getting away with that kind of trash today because people are being taught how to think through the media and through social media and through nefarious people that hate you, that want to make fun of you as you are lying there bleeding out. And we trust those people. And here's what I want to tell you. Get your head out of the lap of media Delilah. Do not trust it. You're going to be different. You're going to be ostracized. Uh, people are going to say terrible things about you. I have, and I, I hear it all now, and I'm going to hear it more and more and more and more and more. And I have a prophetic word for every curse. Like I was in uh, Seattle last week, and a witch came up to me and started pronouncing a curse on me. I mean, in broad daylight. Now, that person is used to Seattle men, and he's not used to guys like me who feel like they ought to stand there and take that. Because I do not feel like I need to stand there and take that whatsoever. But if you want to know what profound theology I actually gave back to him, it's like, no, 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 no. You slave of the enemy, hear me say this to you. Know that this is the word of God for you. I'm rubber and you're glue and whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you. They're like, what? What kind, of, what kind of theology is that? The mouth of the wicked we shall condemn, right? And I'm like, I'm like, go away. Amen. So no, I'm not gonna stand there and listen to that and then I'm not going to go home and entertain it. And go, well, what if this, what is that, what is this, whatever. What if, what if I find $2,000 in the parking lot today? That happened a couple of weeks ago. What if I rescue somebody? What if my phone goes off and I get to see the picture of another little girl that we rescued out of sexual slavery? That happened today. What if I get invited to the Congress to go speak to Congress again? That happened this week. That's good. So I'm like, okay, here's the deal, Pickle. I am... No, you do not control the narrative of what's happening here, and you do not get to enter into my head. This is sacred space. Now, with that said, 
Today, there is a great move and a sweeping, even in our own beautiful nation, of turning everything over to what artificial intelligence says is the truth. There have actually been churches that have literally gone to AI and said, put together a 20-minute message and we want to watch it of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they're sitting there watching an avatar, listening to an AI tell everybody what the gospel is, and they think it's cute. And um, it's not. Now, as I said last week, and I got a lot of hate mail over it, you came out and said that AI is not the devil. AI is not the devil. AI summons the demon. So you can use AI, and I explain some ways that I use AI all the time and use it. Like, if I'm looking for a title for something, like a title, what are you talking about? If I'm looking for a title of a song or of a sermon, I might say, hey, I'm looking for a title in the style of Troy Brewer of Open Door Church, and it has this scripture, that scripture, that scripture, that scripture. I don't want it to have any more than two words, and I want the subtitle to have no more than six words. It'll go. Okay, I could spend all day long searching that out, or I could let it search it out in a half second. Like, whoa, that's too scary. That should not be scary. That's technology. You're okay with using Google for that. Right? So it's the same thing as you using Google, but know this, Google is not your friend. Are you, are you smart enough to be able to handle what I'm saying? Yeah. Because this, this requires a level of intelligence that a lot of people are either one way or the other, and you can't be like that in this, because AI is already a tremendous part of your life. It's a huge part of your life. But when Elon Musk unleashed AI, what he said was this, we are summoning the demon. Pastor Alan DiDio wrote a book on artificial intelligence and a bunch of other weird stuff, and he called it Summoning the Demon because of what Elon Musk, a man from South Africa whose name begins with L, and that's all I have to say about that, is, is saying, hey, here's, let me tell you what we're actually doing. We're summoning the demon. And what he meant by that, well, number one, that's what he said in broad daylight in public. So you can believe that or you cannot believe that. But you're taught to not believe what it is that you're actually seeing and what you're actually hearing. If a man dressed as a woman is teaching your children, that's not him wanting access to your children, that's your children being edified somehow. But I can see a man dressed as a woman after my children, but that's not what you're seeing, right? Okay, we've been taught that through the media. And we're going along with it because people are not brave enough and people are biblically illiterate and people are caught up in the spirit of this age. And you have to go, no, I know exactly what I'm seeing here. So first and foremost, Brother Elon Musk said, we are summoning the demon. That's what he said. But let's not pay any attention to what anybody actually says. But, but what, he, what everybody says he meant by that is this. We're letting the genie out of the bottle, and we think that we can control it, and we cannot. It's going to turn on us. So in this day of incredible breakthrough in technology, and in this day where we are going after where, where we are seeing advances in technology like we've never imagined before, where we are seeing everything speed up, and it's overwhelming, it's, it's incredible, it's wonderful, and it's beautiful, and it's scary, and it's intimidating all at the same time, we have to know how to wade through it. And we cannot ignore it. As the people of God, we cannot ignore it. Amen. You know, there's just a lot of things, friends, that we just cannot ignore any longer. We just can't. Friends, we are living in the last days. We are living in the last days. I, I told you guys last week that the coup de grace of what brought the flood on was not the sin that they were committing. Like, yes, it was. No, he saw the sin that they were committing, and he saw what was going on. But actually, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 says this, And then the Lord saw that the wickedness of the man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. It's like they have no emotional or mental capacity to receive me in any way whatsoever. They had been taught a way to think that did not include the Lord in it. And he's like, we got to change some things. The flood. Now, Jesus described the days that Jesus would come back in 
as, as the days of Noah. A new layer of revelation to me, and I think really to the rest of us, is this. Uh, yeah, it's as the days of Noah in so many different ways, but a new way that we understand it is, is that the th people are being taught how to think in such a way that the thoughts and the intents of their, of their heart is wicked continually, and there's no room for the Word of God in their paradigm of decision-making. So these are the days of Noah. And you and I have to, have to live according to the word of God and according to the mind of Christ, which is available to every single one of us, and the spirit of wisdom that is available to every single one of us, and not according to the wisdom of the age. The wisdom of your age is not your friend. I want to find this scripture for you. It's found in the book of James. James chapter 3, verse 15 through 17 says... This wisdom that comes from the Lord, it does not, they said this wisdom that does not come from the Lord, it does not descend from above. It's earthly, it's sensual, it's demonic. Everybody say earthly, earthly. sensual, and demonic. Now we tend to think of uh, things being demonic as that's, that's the ultimate bad thing. But you need to know this, that the earthly realm has many things in it that is not from the God realm. And God created the earth, but things have been created that were not created by God and built and designed evil contraptions and evil ways of thinking. And he's like, it's earth-based. It's not, it doesn't come from above, it's earth-based. Secondly, it's sensual. It feels a certain way, though, okay, when something is sensual, it tells you how to receive something. So it has to do with your senses. Okay, so we always think of sensual as in something that is erotic or something that is sexual. But sensual simply means this is how you understand what you are seeing. This is how you understand what you are hearing. It's sensual. And then ultimately it is demonic. Now, that's amazing to me. And it says, for where envy and self-seeking is this, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and then peaceable and then gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality and then without hypocrisy. That is not AI. <laughs> it's not. It's like, well, couldn't it be? It could be if every single person that influenced his thinking were godly people. Possibly could be. You could, I, I would imagine that you could have an AI, an artificial intelligence that just gathers all information based upon the word of God and based upon the kingdom and based upon what God Almighty says, that would be pretty daggum rock and cool. But there's no AI out there that's like that. There's none. Well, a few years ago, I started seeing this cat on the internet. And then I was watching his Facebook page. And I couldn't believe it. At one time, he had like 70,000 people. I was like, good googly moogie. That brother's got 70,000 Facebook. And then he had 100,000. Then he had 200,000. Then he had 300,000. I think he has like 400,000 Facebook. Maybe I'm messing that up with somebody else. No, that ain't y'all? They're like, no, it's actually 9 million something. So I, I'm like, well, I, he, and then I started looking at what he was producing I started looking at how he was producing it, and I got with my teams and I said, you guys know this Joseph Z cat? You know, can't even pronounce his last name, so we're just gonna put a Z up there, right? It's like Joseph Zorro. It's just awesome. And some of my team did know. And I'm like, look at what this guy, look at how this guy did this, and look at how easy he made that look. If you've ever seen his teaching, he likes to stand in front of a whiteboard and write on a whiteboard, and talk like, oh, oh, what's his name? Um, yeah, well, everybody's saying a different name. Darren Stott doesn't even know how to write. <laughs> so anyway, he likes to get up there and do all that. And he likes to teach on that. What I, what I really appreciated about him was I was like, this guy loves the truth and this guy loves Jesus. And it's so evident it's so evident. And then, once I got into his teaching, I found out he's wildly prophetic. 
And then I came across Brother Alan DeDio. And Brother Alan DeDio was like, bro, you got, do you know Joseph Z? And I said, no. And he happened to be in town. And he and his bride and his little girl, I believe it was, it was a long time ago, they came to our church. And I about fell over. I couldn't believe he was here. Well, friends, I want to tell you this, man. He was preaching at Daystar yesterday. And he hung over an extra day so that he could come be with us tonight to talk about this AI thing. Guys, Joseph Z is in the house. Come on. Joseph. I love you, man. Thank you so much. I'm going to sit right here. Come out here and sit right here, my friend. All right, Troy. What a great privilege to have you with us, man. Oh, I'm so thankful to be here. This is yeah. awesome. I actually, I actually, whenever I, I called you to see if you could actually, because I know that you have a studio and I know that you're really good at media, and I was like, man, could you join me through media? And you're like, heck, I'll just join you. Yeah, man, I want to be with you. I can't believe it, man. Thank you for oh, the short right. notice. And Listen, we love your ministry. My wife and I do. The Spirit of the Lord that's in Open Door, the Spirit of the Lord that God is using in your life during this time. Troy, I have such a prophetic sense for what God's doing with you right now, and it's powerful. I, I actually, is it okay? May I share some things? Let's go, man. I, I know we're in the artificial oh, don't, intelligence. Don't worry about that. All let's right, go. Let's, we didn't get all dressed up for nothing, so... I began to see something for the church, and I began to see something for the man of God. And I started to see the Lord saying that he was going to break you beyond this year, this year. And into the following year, there's going to be a, a, a true open door to the nations. And then I began to see truckloads of resources coming to you. It began to see it coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And the Lord's saying people will sow, they will sow of their life. And as they begin to sow, here mortal men will receive the tithes, they will receive their offerings. But there I heard the Lord say, he receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. And God's going to begin to advance you in a way you have not encountered before. Your whole life is being, oh brother, your whole life is being prepared for this coming season. And I'm telling you, no, I'm telling you, this church is a hub of revival because we've gone from a time of grace to a time of mercy in this nation. And mercy is where we don't get what we deserve as a nation. And I believe the Lord is waking up these remnant revival centers. And Pastor Troy is a leader in this space. So I heard the Lord saying this. I'm going I'm to share just a couple things. I heard the Lord saying, you've been weighed, you've been tested, you've not been found wanting. I'm going to begin to bring people that will equip you and aid you and strength will come. And a movement will come of rescue and confrontation. And the confrontation will begin to look right into the face of darkness and it will not begin to rise it will not be able to rise against you because I've anointed you no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life for I've anointed you as a warrior and I've given you the face of the lion and I say unto you the provision the vision the acceleration will come and the coming year is going to continue to open and multiply I'm telling you as fire begins to go everywhere the Lord is saying I will preserve and protect this place I will raise you higher and there's a two-year, 24-month window of great expectation, great acceleration, and great receiving of God's promise. I see from the north, south, east, and the west, international favor, international increase, international resources. And here's the word of the Lord. Some of these things will happen in a day. In a day, it will turn around. In a day, it will be paid off. In a day, there will be double for your trouble. In a day, in a day, in a day. And great will be the rejoicing. For I am the Lord your God and I do not fail. I am the one who created this vision. And I am the one that will multiply the way. I am the one that is the great way maker. And I've sent angels on assignment even now to come and stand and supernatural radical miracles will come by way of provision from the fish's mouth, from the very earth itself. I see land coming to you, Troy. More land is coming to you. I see a multiplier of, Troy, of, of, of land coming to your life. And I see it advancing and accelerating and multiplying. I see people that say, I don't know what to do with this property and they will bring it to your feet like the apostles. And the Spirit of the Lord is going to begin to advance this at a higher level. Man, what you have sowed in tears, you will reap with songs of joy. In 26, as others pick up sticks, I say unto you, you will be like those who dreamed 
and many will see, and many will fear, and many will put their trust in the name of the Lord. For I have hidden this time from you, and I'm revealing it to you as a great advancement for the coming onslaught of victory and the coming wave of fire that will push them back off my children. And I bless you, man of God, and I honor you as a leader in the body of Christ. Amen. It is hard to not prophesy when you're sitting next to Troy Brewer. It's hard to not prophesy when you're an open door church. I got to tell you, you guys are wild and crazy. And you're anointed to mess up the plans of the devil. This church, this church is a frustration to the kingdom of darkness. It's a crushing disappointment to the kingdom of darkness. Times of refreshing are coming to Open Door. Times of refreshing are coming to this church. And God's going to make such a way. I'm telling you, there is, I, look, it's not about monetary things and all this, but I'm telling you, there's an increase of wealth that's coming to this church because the Lord is saying unto you, you've loved what I love, and now watch what I will do. You've sown into me, says the Lord. And there will be a great way-making anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The idols of man will die in this church. Man, brother, I am... It's hard to sit next to you. This place has got the juice. There's voltage here. Hallelujah. You know that Pastor Troy is a very humble man? And the Spirit of the Lord, I just keep hearing these words, more help is coming, more increase is coming. Man, you guys, I want to thank you for serving my friend. I want to thank you for finding your calling at Open Door, because this church is on heaven's radar. They're talking about this church up there. Brother, man. Woo. Zerabaki darabarabesikive. In Zora Batekia that ever so crusha in the Robroca Shiki that ever day. I'm bringing an order and a change in this house. I'm bringing strength into this house. There's coming another realm and another anointing of leadership that will lift up the arms of your leaders. And I say unto you, it will be small in many people's eyes as it once was, but it will begin to grow and advance and multiply. And the Lord is saying, I am the way maker. I am multiplying this avenue. And the Lord is saying, sons and daughters will live and they will go forth and they will come back again. I say this is Antioch, Antioch. And there will be many more. I see three more wellsprings coming from this place. There will be three more wellsprings. And I am sending the wagon loads of provision. As they say, the economy is turning. The economy is going down. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Watch what I will do in the midst of difficulty. For the candidate of oil is coming. Men of God who are involved in oil will be involved in this church. The days of provision before the question or the asking, where the plowman overtakes the reaper, and the harvest comes in before it's almost sown. I see something happening where the fields begin to produce in this place in a way you've not experienced before. And revelation knowledge will flow like water. Dreams are now going to increase here. Provision will increase here. The Lord is saying, you've loved what I love, and I will give you of my precious treasure. Man, I'll tell you what, when it all goes down, this is the place to be. Why have I not anointed you as an apostolic prophetic father? I've called you a prophet to nations. 
I've called you to speak to them and not fear their faces. For I've given you the face of the lion. I've given you the face of the warrior. I've made your armor thick. There's an angel here and an angel here. And they cannot touch you, man of God. They cannot harm you. For the spirit of the Lord has risen up a warrior spirit. He's placed it upon you. And I say unto you, you will take the nations. You will go through their barriers. They will not stop you. It cannot be stopped. It is my word. Oh. <laughs> it is my anointing. I put that in you. I put that in you. And I get what I invested in. And my word will not return void. How dare they speak against my servant? Who do they think they are? For I will protect you, and even in your health, I am preserving you even now. For there was a demonic assignment sent against you, directly against your life. Some you knew about, some you did not know about. But again this night, I say unto you, the weapons of their warfare are null and void and struck down. I'm watching over you, your spouse, your children, for the Lord says they are mine. And the spirit of might will be found in this place. For you please me. For you please me. You please me. I'm bringing a new brand of partner to you, partners. I'm bringing those that will carry the load. I'm bringing those that will lift the burden, those that will take up the yoke, those that will say, we will break this fallow ground together. For I've anointed you for this time. I've anointed the children of revival. For there will come an unconventional, uncharacteristic revival from this place and the, the anointing and the sign will be in the rain when it begins to rain watch and see when the deluge comes and there are rains on the plains watch the word of the Lord as I begin to bring forward a mighty revival and a harvest that has not been seen in a generation I've waited for a man to stand in the gap and I have called you for this time and the rains are coming I said to you the rains are coming the floods are coming and the rains are coming and the wagons are coming and the sons and daughters are coming I can see them right now I can see them right now there will be a dividing line between the authentic and the false between the true and the thin veneer and Pastor Troy you don't do fake and God's going to begin to multiply an army of clear-eyed, clear-minded, prophetic warriors that will go rescue them. And the anointing is here of rain. For I've anointed your feet and I've anointed this ground, but I say unto you there's more ground and it is coming unto you. I've already spoken to one. One knows one, but there are more. And I see the anointing of this territory coming to you. And it's going to be through ownership, not borrowing. And I'm going to embarrass you, says the Lord. I will embarrass you because of your faithfulness <laughs> to my name. Because you love what I love. And you hate what I hate. Brashi ki so and I say unto you, those who stand with this house, there is a special blessing of anointing. There's a special blessing of revelation. There's a special blessing of increase, the God kind. And I say the new day is coming because the rains are coming. And man of God, you will go and you will come back again, but really... The sons and daughters will far outrun you. They'll multiply past you. And the legacy and the movement, should Jesus tarry, will be far greater than anything you could have done on your own. And even as the Apostle Paul had a season of peace at the end, I say unto you, I've made a way for you, a land for you, a time for you, 
and I am watching over your days. For I am the Lord your God, and I do not fail, and I am not a man that I would lie. Pastor Troy, you're going to begin to raise up a true clear-eyed, clear-eyed, minded, prophetic movement. God is going to breathe it through you, and people will live, and they will hear, and they will interpret the times. For I say, this is a house of Issachar. They know the times, the seasons, what to do about it, and who their tribe is. I just have to say I'm so profoundly honored to be here this evening. I love your pastor. The Lord is beginning to unlock some ancient mysteries here. He's unlocking things, and I'm telling you, you guys are going to be recipients of a revelation, but it's also going to be very simple. The gospel is not overly complex. It's simple. But I'm telling you, you guys are on the precipice of something remarkable, generational, and historical. It's here. Amen, Pastor Troy. Jesus, your Lord. We love you, Jesus. We celebrate you, Lord. We thank you, God, for your presence. I honestly, the whole time you're giving me that word, I'm just trying to be still because I don't want to fall over and fall off that stage. Man, as soon as, soon as I hugged you, man, I felt the weighty presence of the Lord. And I sat down, I tried to shake it off, went, okay, I, I need, you know, I, I, and then just the... The weighty prayer. I knew. Oh, here we go. I'm about to get a word. I feel God right now. There's a shift that was taking place. It's just like when, when Jesus steps in out of, out of eternity into this space-time continuum, he just splits something apart. And, you know, that's what the year of the open door actually means, is he creates those doors. And he does that. And this is the year of the open door. So many things that you just said that was so profound to me. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to watch it tonight over and over and over again. I'm going to have Leanna listen to it, and I'm going to go over it and just go, wow, that's, that's some good stuff. I, I haven't dreamed a dream that I don't think hasn't come true. I haven't wanted anything that I haven't got. I, I, I feel like I'm the richest person on the planet Earth. I honestly, I just do whatever I want to do. And I've kind of always been like that. When I was, when I didn't have glass in the windows of our house, when we didn't have electricity on, I still did whatever I wanted to do, whenever I wanted to do it. I've always just had such a freedom on me. And today, I came in here early because I had a very important meeting at 10 o'clock and I came in here way earlier than that, and I was in there for a long time. That's our prayer tent over there, and I don't, I don't know if you know about that place, but that's where our elders meet anybody that needs a miracle during praise and worship. Wow. We built it during COVID. Wow. Everybody else closed the door and went, Wee. we built a place for people, for sick people to come and be prayed over. <laughs> like, that's just crazy. Oh, yeah, we're crazy. We believe Jesus is resurrected from the dead, and we also believe he's coming back again. I mean, we're crazy. But I, I was in there and I was praying this morning and the Lord kept telling me, I want you to ask me for something bigger than that. And I'm like, Lord, I can't think of anything bigger than that anymore. I, I, I've been to 56 nations. I'll be in my 57th nation in South Africa here in two weeks. I'll be my 57th. I have, I have, I've, I've done everything I've wanted to do. I, I, I built, and, and God just did it all, and I don't even know how he did it, you know? And so there's this place in me, now that I'm approaching 60 years old, where I just go, I don't really know if you have another level for me to go to, because I've already gone through so many levels. And, and everywhere I go, 
Everybody, I, I have had it prophesied to me over and over and over. The last four or five or six or seven prophecies I've got have been, you, you're going to a whole nother level that you never, it never did enter your mind. In fact, it was hidden from you yeah. and it was hidden from everybody because it's not about you. It's about the impact it will have on the body of King Jesus. And this morning, man, when I was in there praying, I came, the Lord told me, come up there, man. I dare you to seek me. Come out there. And I went, I will. I'll meet you in the tent. Nobody will be there yet. <laughs> Nobody will be there. So I came driving up here, flew in here, went in there, was by myself. And I started asking the Lord for really big things. And the Lord started saying, no. And I was like, I'm always shocked when God tells me no, because he hardly ever tells me no. You know, I tell, I tell everybody in the body of Jesus, you have a green light until God tells you no. Amen. In the Old Testament, you had a no until God told you yes. But in the New Testament, you have a yes until God tells you no. So go, 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 Come go. On. And I live that life. And so hey, I, I clearly heard him say no. And I was like, what's that all about? He's like, you're not asking near high enough. That's not, you're not even in the realm. And so he started having me pray for you guys. And I started thinking of, of different people. You see that? You see that brother that necklace back there with the black shirt back there? You see him? Yeah. He's so good looking. Look at him. He's got that beard. I just want to go back there and kiss him right now. Look at him. <laughs> that guy came up in my prayer time today. And I prayed for him. I want you to know, I cried out for you today, brother. I'm talking about the spirit of the Lord hit me. I started crying for you. I started crying out for you. He lost his wife this last year. And he is one of the most faithful people in our church. And he makes it look so easy to be him. And I'm telling you, he had a rock star wife, man. Wow. Rock star. They had a beautiful marriage. They really loved each other. Wow. And she tragically passed away just not very long ago. And I always see him in church and go, what is that guy doing here, man? Today, the Lord started having me pray for you. And I'm, I started thinking, it was you. And I mean, it was literally you. This is a conversation I had in that prayer tent about you this morning, my brother. And the Lord was saying, is there anything that you wouldn't ask for him that you think is too high? And I'm like, no, there's nothing. It's powerful. And he's like, well, then quit asking me that for you and for your church and for the impact your ministry is making and for the people in your church and quit that. What is that nonsense? And so I did. I, I asked God for some really big things today. And you just gave an answer from the Lord that was exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or think. Jesus. And you had no idea. You know, you had no idea. I haven't told anybody what I asked for today, but I asked the Lord to. Revelation 4, <laughs> you're coming up higher. Amen. Well, I. I was scared to speak the whole time he was talking because I felt the presence of the Lord so much. And I'm like, whoa, this is Jesus. And I appreciate you bringing that anointing, man, and bringing that. That's very humbling. I do believe that we're on heaven's radar, that God sees us. I do think they talk about us. Jesus likes being at open door. He's real comfortable here. <laughs> I really think here. that. Amen. You know... I do think that, and I think that, you know, I've always, I've always had such a burden for the person that nobody else loved. I've always had such a tremendous burden for the girl that everybody has abused. I've just, I don't know, I just, and sometimes Joseph, I would hear him before I would see him. Yeah. And I'd be coming into town and I would hear him, and I'd think, what was that? And then I'd be sitting in a restaurant and I'd hear some girl talking and I'd go, that's who I heard a while ago. And I'd start talking to him and it would be a rescue situation. Wow. She needed to be rescued. I'd say, if you go right now, I can help you. Wow. Sometimes, sometimes the Lord would tell Leanna and I, there'll be a child that's missing an arm or missing a leg or there'll be a, a child that's missing a finger and as soon as you see that kid, rescue that kid. And as soon as we got to that nation, we would come across a child that was missing something. And that's like a, was like a key prophetic thing to us. Yes. And so that's always been my lens is the amazing heart of King Jesus 
for the unloved people. Always. Because I always felt like he loved me so much. That's right. And like, I just feel like Jesus loves me. I just do. And I know he loves me. So, but recently, I have had such a burden for just the body of Jesus, the whole church. And I haven't until recently been connected to the rest of the body of Jesus. We were like by ourselves, disconnected for so long. And now I'm like, oh, I wish every church in the world could have people like this in it. Yeah. I wish every church in the world could have people that are just picking up the, the flag and running with it. And the Lord has been showing me he really wants, a big part of the mission of Open Door Church is actually to impact the body of Jesus. Come on. To influence the body of Jesus. Where people ask questions like, oh, why are we not doing that? Yeah. And why are we not seeing God move like that? And if they're that free, why can't we be that free? And, it, you know, those kinds of things. And I'm, I really haven't wanted that mantle, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Um, you know, I, when, when I'm around mighty men of God, I'm in awe of them. You know, mighty women of God. And my favorite teachers and, fam and, and favorite church leaders, when I get around them, I'm not like, hey, dude, what's going on? I'm, I just sit there and go, I want to hear everything this person has to say. Yeah. Because, because I want to. Yes. But the Lord is telling me, no, what I want to do with you, Troy, and what I want to do with Open Door Church is I want to impact the body of Jesus. Come on with the face that he's given us. And it is the face of a lion. It is. It's about being brave. It is. It's about having a heart for Israel. Yes. It's about our roar being heard, right? <laughs> it's about, I know what the face of a lion actually means, and it's, it's actually the book of Matthew is what it is. And so um, that was a right on word, brother. Oh, brother, I'm, I'm so honored to be with you because there's a transitional grace on this ministry on you. And, you know, for the world, there's trouble coming. But I'm telling you, there is a anointing, that Joseph anointing. Um, I believe that with this eclipse word you have, all the things that are happening, you're crossing over into another seven years of a different kind of provision. And God is just with you. And I, I just sense it here. It, this, there's an anointing for the nation. There's an anointing for the nations here. And God's going to begin to empower so many people greatly. Are there any, like, leaders in the church that are here? Can I see some of the leaders some back there, here. How many of you are a leader in the church? Can you keep your hand up just for a second? I want to look at some of you. May I, sir? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Looking over here. Any in here, right here? Thank you, Jesus. Leaders in the church. Thank you, Father. Sir, on the back row, all the way there with your hand raised against the wall. The Spirit of the Lord is beginning to recalibrate things even in your heart and in your life. There's been a season of sowing and sowing and putting things into order and continuing to be everything God has marked you and called you to be. And the Spirit of the Lord is now saying the reward is with him to the faithful. And there is strength coming upon you and upon your family and a young lady. And God is watching over even her. And the Spirit of the Lord is watching over your house. You served God's house. He's going to take care of your house. It's very important. Man of God, when Pastor Troy pointed at you and began to speak about the things that you've just gone through, I saw a piece of your life that was missing as soon as he started talking. And the Lord knows I'm telling you how I saw it. And I saw this piece of your life that was missing, and it was like a wound had come, and the wound is beginning to be healed slowly. But the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I will make plan B very good. And it's going to be well with you. And I will preserve you and I will take you through this time. And I see the strength of God giving you the ability to go over the valley to the other side and stand in such a way that the glory of the Lord is on your life. And you'll look back and say, God has been with me every step of the way. And you please God, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Was there some leaders over here? Man, Pastor Otis, that was a word, man. That was a good word. Yes, sir. Was there leaders over here? Everybody, everybody just, everybody stand up. We're going to do this for a few minutes. Come on, Jesus. Yes, absolutely. You're doing great. No, no, everybody stand up. I want, 
Hey, listen, this is a holy moment. This is a moment, listen. See, when God does something with your pastor in front of you, it's not just for me, it's for all of you. Do you understand that? If I receive a word that next level provision is coming, is coming, that all people are going to join with me, you can receive that word. If you can, right? If you can see the transition and the impact that God is doing with me and the way that God is speaking to me, that's not because I've got everything right in my life. It has nothing to do with any of that. It has to do with the anointing and who I am to King Jesus. Amen. Amen. And, and you're a part, we're a part of the same body of Christ. And that's your word. So this lady right here in the black shirt that's got the white, uh, it was, I think it says RTD2 or something. There you go, RTS, there you go. <laughs> yeah, right on. Hey, I want you, you got that Raise the Standard shirt? I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. Here's what I saw when I looked out. I saw some knucklehead had called you and said something terrible to you. And I'll tell you, you have an anointing in your life that says, that is not going to break my heart. That is not true. That is not real. That's not the way that it's going to play out. And you know what that conversation is. You know what that kind of stuff is. And I'm just telling you, right now, that is exactly what I saw on you. That the Lord sees your heart, and God says, it will not go as they said it's going to go. It's going to go the way that you said it's going to go because the Lord saw you and that you were faithful in that moment. He sees your faithfulness. That's a word from the Lord for you. That's a word from King Jesus. Hallelujah. Was that, hey, look, was, was that accurate? It's, it's the Lord. So when you start moving in a prophetic anointing, you can actually start seeing words on people. Right on? Hey, I, I don't mean to get you to teach because I want to continue to do this, but how do, you, how do you see words on people? How does that work for you? I see it like writing in the air sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I see it. Sometimes I see it with an impression or an intuitive vision. Or, or God will radiate a person to me. Sometimes it'll show up in my memory. In like, mind. like somebody told me that and I'm just remembering. You know that feeling you get when you remember somebody's name and you're like, oh, yeah, her name is so, it, that feeling? Wow. It shows up in my memory for some reason, even though it's never been there before. It's amazing. Like with her, I saw a telephone. As soon as I saw her, I was like, I saw a telephone real quick. And then I remembered, oh yeah, she got a bad phone call. I got bad news. Somebody was ugly and they were knucklehead about it. And she stood firm. Yeah, I know exactly how the whole thing played out. It was awesome. And it went exactly the way that she said it would go, except for we're talking about the present and the future, but it showed up in my memory. Wow. So I don't know if any of that made sense, but it don't got to make sense. Just, just lift your hands to the Lord. Let's continue to do this for just a minute. Jesus. Jesus. Uh, this man here Love with you, the, the hat and the blue shirt. I saw the stuffing get knocked out of you years ago with words from a man. And the Lord began to say he's going to heal that, stitch that. And that's going to begin to strengthen in you as well. Then I see a scenario with a vehicle. And God's working that process out as well. And I see a right sizing coming to that scenario. So I begin to bless you, agreeing with Pastor Troy and the way that the Spirit's moving here. I just begin to release that strength over you right now in Jesus' name. This next year is going to be a metamorphosis for you, a very strong metamorphosis, where the Lord begins to take you from one place to another, and you're going to learn what the word worthy means as you step into that. And I bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You, you attend here, I would assume? Man, you should. <laughs> this is awesome. And I bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, I just looked down on the stage right here, and there was a diamond down here on this stage. Is there a diamond? Yeah, it's right here. Diamond seeds. Yeah, it was right here. It was right there on the floor. I just now picked it up. Come on, Pastor Troy. I have a word on that. Yeah. Hallelujah. She da -da 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 -da. Diamond oh seeds is Psalm 126, Pastor Troy. What people have sowed in tears, they're going to reap with songs of joy. Come on. Lord. Come on, just, just one more minute. Let's just keep seeking the Lord here for a minute. Thank you, Lord. Your glory, your goodness. We love you, Lord. We are your people. I breathe the breath of life in this place in Jesus' name. 
Oh, I love you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I love you, God. I praise you, Lord. Jesus, I love you, Lord. You're so good to me. I love you, Lord. Jesus, I love you, Lord. Man, I feel the Lord. He's healing folks right now. He's just healing you. He's just healing you. He's just going to take away all the crud and the mess and the stuff that just gets all over you. Times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. Brother Joseph said that while I go. I love you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. You're so good to me. There's healing in his wings. The turnaround of losses is a turnaround of losses. People losing, things going away. And I sense a turnaround of losses that God's just going to begin to restore and heal. And it's a supernatural quickening that's hitting people in their spirit. And they're going to begin to absolutely have a spirit of rejoicing over loss. And it's almost like a supernatural laughter will come on you when you look at the loss. It's not funny, but it is joyful. And God's giving you the strength to recover and recover supernaturally. People have lost people. And there's a supernatural restoration. Hallelujah. Boy, do I like being with you. Rebo Sorono. You know, when you show up for other, uh, for other people, God Almighty will show up for you. He will. He's not going to. Listen, he will never allow you to out God God. He's God. In this whole ministry, guys, we, we show up for so many other people. That's, that's the anointing that God has given us. It's what we do. And so you can expect him to show up. Man, I'm hearing things right now. I'm hearing things, I'm seeing things right now. Like, okay, well, I don't do that. It's time for you to do that. You're, you're, you're not living 40, 50 years ago. You're living in a day today that is not according to the wisdom of this age. And, and, and all you, listen, all you gotta do is just say yes. Yes, yes. Just say yes. 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 You hear that hobbit over there say yes? <laughs> yes. Yes. Come on, Pastor Nate. Yes. Everybody just start saying yes. Just say yes. 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 We have a yes in our spirit. We have a yes in our mouth. We have a yes in our actions. Woo. Yes. Come on. Yes. 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 Yes in Jesus' name. Yes. Come on. Just a spirit that makes you clean is here tonight. Yes, Lord. A spirit that makes you clean. You just felt dirty, just felt nasty, just felt yucky. Just the yuckiness of everyday life just get on you. I'm telling you, Jesus comes in and makes all things brand new. He, he cleans you like a fuller soap, the Bible says. I loved what you said, the spirit of the turnaround is here. When we say the spirit of that, it means a move of God, and God always sends an angel for the performance of his word. It's a move of God that's ushered in by angelic presence. Yes. I loved what you said a while ago, that you, that I got an angel on either side of me. That's true. Man, I, I used to feel sorry for my angels because all the bad places <laughs> I took them. But I didn't understand. They're chomping at the bit to go to those places. They're just looking for people that are willing. I just I honestly thought, well, they can hang out with a lot higher class of people than me. <laughs> and, with, and they could. They could. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to be brave. I'm going to be brave. And I'm going to step into it. And I think that the Lord loves that. That belongs to you. Because we're all stepping in this thing together. We truly are. This, this man of God, this pastor over there in the cowboy hat, I bless you, man of God. Could you just lift your hands to the Lord right there where you're at? I just declare in the name of King Jesus. 
that God Almighty has given you the heart of a farmer, that you're one that plants and you're still doing that. Your parents before you, you know, you, me and you was talking about the farmer's almanac earlier, and you're still a farmer to this day. And there's still a harvest, brother, that you have not yet seen yet. And I want to tell you, you're not too old to see that harvest. And you're not washed up and people don't do things like that anymore. Brother, you're still significant in the body of King Jesus. You got a word, you have a heart, you have experience. You, got a, you have a vision from the Lord. You have a lifetime and a history with Jesus himself. Brother, you're significant, sir. And we're honored to be with you today. We're honored. I just declare a new place of honor for you where, where you've been passed over over a whole lot of things, that there's a lot of things that you'd like to see happen for your wife that you hadn't been able to make happen. And God Almighty's like, no, no, I know those things and I love those things. You're going to see those things happen. Oh, man of God, how much the Lord loves you. He loves you, sir. Jesus. Jesus. You, you're going to see this happen. And I'm, I'm just going to throw out the number three and say this. You're going to see this happen three times very shortly where people that you have ministered to in years past give you a call or they contact you in some way and say, you made a powerful impact in my life. And it might have already started this thing that's going on, but you need to, you need to know this. They're going to start contacting you and saying, you made a, and that, this is a sign from the Lord for you that you know your significance and your impact now. That's not then, that's now that you're still impacting their life today. You fought a lot of church battles like all of us pastors have, and you still have a heart for being that farmer that God Almighty has, played, has made you to be for his kingdom and for his field. You go, man of God. You keep on plowing. You keep on planting. You keep on watering. You keep yeah. on sowing. You keep on reaping. Keep on yeah. going. Rejuvenation on you in the name of King Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You, you have something else? Oh, okay. yeah, brother. I'm just, I, there's such an anointing on you, Pastor Troy. I, I just, the year of favor is coming on you, this church. I'm trying to just stay focused on what the Lord's saying for people, but I feel like I'm on an assignment for you. And this thing just keeps coming back to me. What you've sown in tears, you're going to reap with songs of joy. That the Lord is going to continue to advance this harvest. He's going to continue to advance things. And it's like you're going to find a supernatural favor with people in a way you've not experienced it before. And God's just going to keep on ministering to you and through you, sir. There's a revelatory... When you started talking about the scrolls earlier, you're talking about the scrolls coming. I'm telling you, the scrolls are here. And there's this revelatory anointing that's going to come through you. More volumes, more books, more understanding, more teaching. The latter end will be greater than the former. And God's going to continue to multiply this. And, and, and it's going to be a lot like effortless compared to what it once was. It's going to be effortless compared to what it was. And God's just going to do this. It's like the people are going to start showing up to serve. The people are going to show up in a way you've not encountered before. The woman of God's going to be thrilled. For I've preserved you for these last days. I've preserved you for myself. I've preserved you for these times. And they will come from the north, the south, the east and the west. And it's almost as if you have an anointing to step into the realm of where the Chaldeans once were and begin to bring a right sizing and an order and clarity and say, follow that star, you will find him. And the Lord's hand is upon your life in a revelatory way. And Pastor Troy, the outcasts are being turned into broadcasts, even with a podcast. And God's hand of favor is upon you. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Just for a moment, can we stretch our hands towards the pastor, the man of God that we all love and honor so much? Just begin to pray with me for a moment. 
Shida, pray in the spirit if you would. God is opening a new way here, and I'm just being obedient. I thought we were talking about AI tonight. But just begin to pray and intercede. I am preparing the way. I am laying the pathway. I am lighting up the path right now. A way you have not seen, a new and living way. A way I've prepared from the foundation of the earth. Before you were born, I planned this season. And you're arriving at it. You are arriving at your destination. All the practice, all the pain, all the joy. A man out of time. A man out of time. For I plucked you as out of time. And I bring you back into time. And I take you on the path that I've prepared from the foundation of the earth. For these are my days. And they are terrible and great days. But I've anointed you for these times to light the path. And I will call you a pillar of righteousness and other sons and daughters, pillars of righteousness in the house of the Lord, and the foundation will not be uprooted, for it is of me. For I built this foundation, and it will last, and it will last again. And many will see, and many will fear. And many will put their trust in the Lord. And even as I've answered the fight inside in you, man of God, many will have the fight inside answered in them, around you, and they will become the sons and the daughters that I prophesied of. I'm looking at an encounter, man of God, that you were in with the Lord, where he drew you to himself into the spirit face to face and began to speak to you as a man speaks with a man. And the Lord says, I will revisit these days. I will revisit you in this way. And when this begins to happen, the glory of the Lord will once again radiate, and my breath and my oil will come upon the calling. And the multiplier will come, and the chariots and the horsemen thereof, and the fire within them. And I will do an unconventional work that many will see, and many will fear, and many will put their trust in the Lord. For I say, my son is a humble man, and my son is a man that does not put attention upon himself. And the Lord is saying, so I am putting attention on you. I am shining my light on you, for I am proud of you. Your face has come up before me again this day, and it is clean, for I know you. And through you, I will make a great generation of radical reformers, and they will lack nothing. Father, I bless this church, and we bless the people of God. I, I want to I do something, if it's okay, sir. I understand that I'm in the house of God. I'm in the man of God's house. And I take this very serious. I respect this man very much. I'd go to war for this man. I want to, if I may, receive an offering for the man of God or for the church one more time tonight. And we're going to sow in it too. And I don't know how to say this, but there's an anointing here. It's a breakthrough anointing for Open Door. It's a breakthrough anointing for the pastor, for the church. And I'm just being obedient. And if that's okay and I may do it, I'm gonna ask if, uh, if the ushers could come and be ready for Open Door, for the man of God. This is for the church, this is for what's happening. And I believe somebody has a word from God, something they know God's been nudging them to do. And I wanna say to you, if you're watching online or here, now is the time. So. Can I tell you this? One thing, I want to ask the altar team to come up here. And everybody that gives into this, I want you to pray over every single person that comes up here. I've been pastoring this church for 28 years. We've never taken up an offering for me. Okay? I, not one time. 
Uh, I would have told him no if he would ask. But tonight me. we are. Sure. But tonight we are. Oh yeah, we, we are. are. Because I'm telling you, I, if that's the way that God wants to move, then that's fine. And I'm about to go to Uganda, and I'll take it with me. Hallelujah. Pastor Troy, <laughs> can I interrupt you, sir? Yes, sir. I want to interrupt you before you ruin this offering. <laughs> I love you. I'm here on assignment tonight. If you love your pastor, and listen, people can do what they can do. It's not about that. But I want to say to you tonight, if your offering means something to you, so will your harvest. And this is no obligation, none of that stuff. But I believe there's a time and a place to bless a man of God, and I want to bless Pastor Troy tonight. Do you want to bless him with me? I believe this is a time where you're sowing into your future, you're sowing into your breakthrough. Hallelujah. I'm just going to say it out loud. Is it okay if I say the number that we're going to sow? Here, I'm going to start tonight. I'm sowing $10,000 into Pastor Troy tonight. Okay? And we're just, I, I just feel compelled to say that. We're getting nothing out of this, and Pastor Troy, he'd pass out if he knew this was going to happen. So I want you to do this, and I don't know how we make these checks up, but I'm saying I want this to go to Pastor Troy, whether it's designated, uh, maybe one of the ushers or uh, leaders can help me, but I want to do this where this is made up for him. Praise God. I'm going to take an act of faith. Is there anybody that can give radical tonight? You want to raise your hand and say, I'm going to give radically tonight? Anybody? Praise God. Anybody want to bless their pastor tonight? I encourage you to come forward and give your very best this evening. Come on, right now. Your very best. If you don't know what to give, give your wallet to somebody next to you and say, be led. I want to bless the man of God tonight. For some people, $20 is a lot. For some people, $100,000. You guys be praying over all these people that are giving in here. There you go. Somebody get, get closer to that offering bucket. Let's do that. I want you to lay your hands on these people. Yeah. Speak a word over them in the name of Jesus. That's good. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the Spirit of the Lord is here. Oh, Jesus. I declare in the name of King Jesus as God spoke that my finances are changing, that our finances are changing in Jesus' name. I declare that. That's a good thing to happen. Amen. Friends, our altar team is going to be up here for a long time, and we're going to be praying for people. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Look at all this. Hey, Amen. while these guys are waiting in line, you guys feel free to just pray over these people that are waiting in line right there. You're welcome to do that. Hallelujah. Friends, I love you so much. Joseph Z is so good to have you here tonight. I love you, Pastor. Man, I love Charlie. you, man. Guys, what an incredible night. We never got to AI. What we got to was authentic wisdom. <laughs> Spirit of wisdom came in the house. We asked for that, and then it happened. Love you so much. I call you blessed. Guys, please be in prayer for me. I'll see you guys when I get back. Brother Brian Boat's going to be here this coming Sunday. Brother Brian Boat. Yeah, he's going to be here. He's going to bring it. Coming in from L.A. And I'm going to be in Uganda, and then I'm going to be in South Africa. So please be in prayer for me as, as we go to have our hearts broken in a whole new way. Don't ever protect your heart from being broken by the Lord. Don't you ever do it. Because God Almighty cannot resist a broken heart. So I declare the goodness of the Lord you shall see in the land of the living in the name of King Jesus. That the spirit of the living God is here in the name of King Jesus. That you are the head and not the tail. You are above and you are not beneath. And you are highly favored of the Lord in Jesus' name. Bye-bye, everybody. I love you guys.